If you're the type of person who tends to snap multiple photos of something, hoping that one comes out, but then you inevitably forget to delete the other 10, then this is the video for you. Hey folks, David A. Cox here with Tech Talk America. As we enter the semi-retirement phase of my YouTube channel, at this point, I only release content that I'm passionate about. Today, we are tackling a very common headache in photo organization managing similar photos. While the Photos app does now address duplicates, it falls short with similar shots. To address this issue, we're gonna use a third-party tool, and before I tell you what it is, rest assured this is not a sponsored video. The name of the app is Photo Sweeper. It's $10, one-time payment, and you can get it right from the App Store. When you launch it, double-click on your photos library shown here at the top right. Now click Compare at the bottom. It should open automatically to the Similar Photos tab, and at this point, let me share with you the settings that I use. Set Compare to any size. File name should be set to any. Now, when it comes to setting the time gap, I recommend that you actually run this tool twice with two different settings. The first time you run it, set it to two minutes or less. Then when you're done, come back and run it again, but this time set the time gap to unlimited. The reason why is if you have two photos that are similar, but one has broken metadata, it won't get flagged in the first scenario. But by altering the time gap to unlimited, it should pick it up the second time around. When it comes to matching level, I'd like to leave it right around 70%. Now click start, and at this point, you'll just have to sit back and wait. Depending on how fast your computer is, as well as how many photos are in your library, this process can take a little while. When it's done, it's gonna give you a pop-up asking whether you want it to auto mark everything. My advice is to allow it to do its thing. You can always switch the selection in the next step, so just let the AI do its thing. Before we go any further, I would like to bring your attention to this chart here at the bottom left. Here it'll show you how much space you stand to reclaim as well as how many photos it found. Do me one little favor and let me know in the comments section how much space you reclaimed. That way other people who are watching this video for the first time can see how useful it is. Here in the left-hand column, you'll see the list of photos followed by two numbers, one in green, one in red. If it says one and one, that means there's a total of two similar photos. One is marked as a keeper and the other to be trashed. Those are really easy to go through, but the ones that you really want to pay extra attention to is when the number in red is greater than one. So for example, if it says one and three, that means there are a total of four photos, one keeper and three to be marked as trashed. In my experience, one of the things that tends to confuse people about this window is which image is the keeper and which ones are to be trashed. The easy way to tell the difference is look for the red trash can icon at the bottom right corner of the image. If there is no trash can, that means that that image is the keeper. When you're done, click trash marked. Okay, we're almost done, but please, please, please pay close attention to this next step because if you screw this last step up, you're gonna undo all the work that we've done. When Photo Sweeper is finished, it's gonna put the photos that are to be trashed into an album called Photo Sweeper Trash. The mistake a lot of people make is they select all the photos in this album and then tap the delete key. That's the wrong thing to do because if you simply tap delete, that's removed from album, but the photos themselves are still in the library. However, if instead you press Command Delete, that is the shortcut to send files to the trash. Keep in mind, if you ever need help with your Mac, whether it's organizing photos, transferring your data to a new Mac, or something else, you can still work with me from the privacy and comfort of your own home. To book a one-hour session, please visit my website at techtalkamerica.com. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.